The Anunnaki fully leave this planet? As far as I know. They were recalled because what they did, as in my understanding, as Bashar has explained it, what they did, they shouldn't have done. They weren't supposed to genetically engineer the native species at all. Um, and therefore, by having done that to aid and assist them in their work, uh, I think my understanding of the story is that they were actually recalled. And then the rest of the Anunnaki had to sort of guide us for a while to make sure we could sort of survive on our own. And that's where all the ancient stories of the gods come in that are intervening, you know, with humanity and all that kind of stuff. Watching us the giants more. too? That's more the idea of the early Anunnaki actually mating with human women. Creating the demigods and all of that kind of stuff. So again, not something they probably should have done. And we're obviously part of them. If that whole story holds water, we're part Anunnaki. That's why our genetics are what they are. Uh, why things could be very confused here for us. Why there's such a mix of people. So the story isn't complete yet, but so far that's what we've been told from Bashar. What is the link with the Anunnaki and the Egyptians? Is there any link there? There may be. It's more, that's more recent. The Anunnaki were hundreds of thousands of years ago. Uh, the idea though that they spawned once humanity was kind of guided to a certain point, it spawned advanced civilizations like what we call Lemuria and Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more the advanced civilization of Atlantis that affected the early Egyptian civilization and started giving them the knowledge they needed to build pyramids and all that kind of stuff that are still very advanced today until the knowledge was lost. But, you know, the destruction of Atlantis and all that caused a lot of knowledge to be lost over time. So we're only just kind of recapturing some of that now. I'm curious about the correlation between our level of consciousness and the ability to hold information and the awareness of how the pyramids were built and rediscovering this information. Is that is it more of sort of like a parallel meeting place that happens with the technology and consciousness or is yes yeah yeah i think bashar has said you know the level of technology that exists in any civilization is a marker to some degree of the level of their consciousness because if your consciousness doesn't arrive at a certain level you can't even imagine how to build certain things yeah. how to do things now the atlanteans had a very high level of consciousness at a certain point in their history, as I understand it. And they achieved a lot of things, but they also achieved a lot of things that are different than the way we've achieved certain things. So we have yet to learn how they did certain things, although we have hints that they understood things about light, about sound, vibration, that allowed them to achieve a lot of interesting things. And we just have learned to do things differently. You know, we have atomic power, I don't think they had atomic power, but they had vibrational power. Mm -hmm. They had an understanding of crystalline light power, you know, and things like that. So, you know, it's just a matter of how each civilization expresses what their consciousness does. The problem is that our consciousness is also compartmentalized. So we can have certain advances in technology and not necessarily be so advanced spiritually or morally, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to catch up, I think, to the idea that that all has to be balanced out before we can really achieve a quantum leap to the next level of understanding. I want to go both sides of that. So first off, what is it that takes a civilization out? Is there actual um, proactive entities that make sure that a planet stays calm enough? Or is this like, or is it cataclysm? Is it astral? Well, yeah, I mean, from Bashar's point of view, that's what wiped out Atlantis finally was a comet hit the sea and tsunamis everywhere. And that to me is what he says is that's the biblical flood that we're recounting is the fact that an, a comet hit the ocean and there were floods that happened, widespread floods that happened from that. And it wiped out the last vestiges of Atlantis. But again, Earth is a place of cycles. There are cataclysms that happen in this reality that have taken out many different civilizations. I think scientists are beginning to discover that more than a few civilizations have been wiped out on this planet by a variety of catastrophes, including meteorites. 
So, you know, it's like begin again, begin again, begin again. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of pyramids around the world and temples were built is we're going to lose this information from time to time because that's just the nature of being on Earth. So let's build things that are almost indestructible that contain all the information that people will need to rediscover so they don't have to start from scratch. They just have to be smart enough to understand that this is a special structure and that there's something they can learn from it. And we have discovered, obviously, there's advanced mathematics in the Great Pyramid and other temples and pyramids around the world. Mm -hmm. And I think they were all constructed around the same time before the destruction of Atlantis, because I think some people knew it was coming again. Because mm -hmm. these well, things work in cycles, you know, so. You say that, and I thought to myself, what would I do if I thought that there was going to be some kind of fallout. And I thought to myself, where would I go if that happened? What would I do? And it'd be like, you just go in our earth. Mm -hmm. Like, where else do you go? If you can't get off the planet, you go inside. Did right. and that's you exactly, see that? Yeah, that's exactly what happened with the greys. They went underground. And that's why they mutated into the form that they're in. It's why they have such large eyes. <laughs> they had to see in the dark. So even though they had lighting, it's very sparse because again, they were at a point where their civilization had pretty much collapsed in scrounging together whatever advancement they had was the last ditch effort to shift to another reality to save themselves. So they mutated in the way that they did by going underground. Are they still there? No, no, no. That's long gone in their reality. Okay. I mean, again, everything exists at the same time, but linearly yeah. speaking, no. That's over and done with for them because now they're here and they're creating the hybrids and there may not be that many grays left, in fact, at this time frame. So being here, being on Earth, on the surface or in a ship nearby, so in ships on mostly. the moon. Yeah, bases underground, under ocean, on the moon, bases like that, things like that from where they can operate with impunity. Um, but, you know, we were, according to the stories, offered a lot of this technology, not necessarily from the greys, but from other species back in the 50s, and we refused, again, out of fear. So, you know, they're doing what they can behind the scenes to save themselves and hopefully save us from hmm. going down the same path. But <clears throat> there's a lot of paranoia and a lot of fear to overcome in the powers that be because they don't want to lose what they see as their power even though it's not really an expression of power. Uh, but, you know, it's starting to come out. The, the cracks are showing. Information is leaking out. And a lot of people I've heard on the inside are trying to get that information out as well because they no longer believe it's really to our benefit to keep all of this hidden. Inside? When you say inside, who is it you're referring to? Inside the clandestine organizations that are privy to the information that we have crashed craft, we have alien bodies, that know what's going on with, you know, all of that. I think there's a larger number every day of people on the inside that are talking. There was just a Senate hearing recently by someone that was from the inside that said, hey, this is what's actually happening, folks. So you're seeing that more and more. I think people are refusing to keep this a secret because they know it's not to our benefit any longer to do that. It may have been a good thing to do just after World War II when everyone was really scared. But it's gone on for too long just because people are trying to do power grabs and stuff like that. It's no longer to our benefit, I think, to keep this a secret.